Appalachia is full of folklore and superstitions. And although people don't live by them, maybe like they did once upon a time, they you do still often hear them passed down. It's more of in a way, either in a joking manner or in a way, manner of uh, maybe I don't believe that, but just in case, kind of like the people that knock on wood, which is a really common one, uh, not just in Appalachia, but everywhere. So it's kind of like Granny, she'll knock on wood. She's one of those people that'll say like, I've been really good in good health this year, knock on wood, I hope I continue to be. But there's, um, so it's it's a little bit of both. Maybe something that's passed down through the families because grandpa or grandma said it. And maybe you don't, maybe you believe it, but maybe you don't necessarily believe it. But because they said it, you find yourself thinking it or saying it yourself. But I've jotted down a few of them for us to go over today. And I hope you'll leave a comment and tell me about the ones maybe that you're familiar with that I share or the ones that you've never even heard of. So there's tons of uh, folklore about weather. One of the ones that I wish would be true that I look for every year, I've heard it my whole life, but it doesn't, it doesn't come true. I love snow, so I'm always longing for snow. But one of the common ones is forever how many fogs are it, you have in the month of August, that's how many snows you'll have that winter. That one doesn't work out here for sure, maybe in another part of Appalachia, but where I live, I don't live high enough elevation to, to actually get a lot of snowy winters. Um, a cat eating grass, if you see a cat eating grass, that foretells rain. One of my favorite ones about weather um, is if the sun is shining and it's raining, while it's raining, if you see the sun shining, then that means the devil's beating his wife. Now, I've heard that one my entire life, and it's just such a colorful uh, thing to say or to think about. Uh, here's some other ones about the sun. If the sun shines while it's raining, it'll rain at the same time the next day. It will rain the following day if the sun sets with clouds. And then there's this one is biblical, so it's not just in Appalachia, of course, you hear it all over the world, but you know, the red and sky, red sky in the morning, sailors take warning, red sky at night, sailors delight. That kind of plays off the biblical uh, ver uh, Bible verse there. Uh, if you lay a black snake over a fence or tree with its belly facing the sun, it will soon rain. So, you know, you wonder how many drought ridden summers when people were praying for rain that they actually got a snake and did that to see if it would help. Those make me think of some other colorful sayings, not really folklore at all, but that we say uh, when he thinks the sun rises and sets in the in his hind end. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but somebody, if they're really proud of their self, you might say why he thinks the sun rises and sets in his hind end and it don't. Um, happy as a dead pig in sunshine. You know, that just don't even make any sense whatsoever, but that's one I've heard a lot. Um, and this one, I just saying that's kind of wise, uh, one of the wise ones, the sun don't shine on the same man all the time or the sun don't shine on the same dog all the time. So, you know, every everybody goes through periods of happiness and not happiness, I guess. Uh, the, probably the most common folklore or superstitious ones in Appalachia are all about death. Everything ends in death. It's always about death. So a, a dog howling at night pretends death, and I'm thinking when I, I first read that one, I, it's not one I grew up hearing, but I thought, well, I hope they never lived near somebody that had coon dogs, <laughs> because that's all I did. I grew up in a family of coon hunters, so uh, there's a lot of howling dogs at night. Uh, this one is really interesting. An apple held by a dying person until his death, and then after his death, given to an alcoholic or a habitual drunkard to eat will cure that person of his craving for strong drink. That one was um, shared with me by Ethelene Dyer Jones, a dear, sweet lady. She told me about that one. She grew up in uh, the Choistoe area of Appalachia, which is in northern Georgia. This is the same one. She shared this one, too. If a person has a goiter on their neck, he or she should go to where there's been a death, take the hand of the deceased, and rub the de dead hand over the goiter. Uh, and this is a sure cure. Yikes. That's a scary one. If a picture falls off the wall, that's supposed to indicate someone might die. If a bird flies in the house, that's also supposed to indicate someone might die or death is near. Um, those are ones that I've heard, those two, that about the bird and the, photo, and the picture I've heard my whole life, but I've never seen neither one of them to be true. Um, death comes in threes. That is one that kind of seems true to me. It seems like somebody in the community dies and before you know it there's other two other people not connected with that person but somehow in your life i guess connected to your life that one does seem to hold true to me 
Another one about death, this is not really a, a folklore, but a custom. I, just before I'm filming this, I had to take Granny over to Blairsville to the doctor, and there was a funeral procession. And I don't know, I know they do this in lots of places in the South, but I don't know about in other areas of the country. You can let me know if they do it where you live. But as soon as we saw the funeral procession, I noticed that I seen, the, actually before I seen it, I seen people in front of me pulling to the side of the road. So that's like a sign of respect that if a funeral procession comes through, everyone stops on the side of the road and waits till the procession is gone before they go on in traffic and go on to where they're going to. Uh, there's also a lot of folklore uh, and superstitions about being sick or about sickness. So this is an interest one, interesting one, which doesn't like this. So many of these, just like everything else, like our language in Appalachia changes. These have changed uh, or went away, fell out of fashion, whatever you want to say, because society is different. So like in days gone by, you really had to worry about having the whooping cough, whooping cough. Today, that's not as much of an issue with kids because they take vaccines. But a milk or food stolen from a neighbor and fed to a child will cure the whooping cough. Amazing, huh? If you're homesick, I've been homesick before. I've been out of town uh, one time when I li lived away from my home and I was homesick, but I didn't know this. This was one I just read. If you're homesick, you can look up the chimney in the house where the homesick person, where you're at, um, or residing, and that'll cure your homesickness. Or you can sprinkle salt between the sheet and the mattress on the bed where you're sleeping, and that'll cure your homesickness. That's interesting. Uh, if you have a sore throat, I've heard this one my whole life, a cure for it, according to folklore, is to put dirty socks around your neck and sleep like that. And I've heard that one, and that's one of the ones that makes you smile because you're like, that's so silly. But recently on the Blind Pig and the Acorn, someone left a comment, and they, it was really nice, and they were talking about whatever subject we were talking about. But they said, oh, and by the way, my father was one of those people who believed at the first sign of a sore throat, he put a sock, a dirty sock around his, his own sock, around his neck and slept like that and swore that it worked, that it cured his sore throat. So that was just really interesting to actually see someone that was familiar with um, that, that one actually being lived out, not just reading it in a book or something. If you, if you ever had a sty in your eye, I have. It's very painful. To cure a sty, you're supposed to rub the tail of a black cat over the sty, and that's supposed to cure it. I suffer from headaches. I have migraines a lot, so I'm always interested in the ones for headaches. And this is, uh, I've read some where it says uh, for a headache, you're supposed to cut a piece of your hair and you put it in a tree that's been struck by lightning, and that's supposed to cure your headaches. Um, or bury it. Take your hair out and bury it. It seems like Papaw told me one one time. He actually let Cory and Katie cut his hair one time. This is years and years ago. And it turned out okay, but at the time I was like, are you crazy? Why are you letting them cut your hair? But anyway, he said you had to bury your hair because if a, a bird got a piece of it and took it off, then that you would die. It's another one where you'd die. If you, a child has asthma, Katie had asthma as a child, but um, you're supposed to take a piece of their hair and put it in a tree and make a mark like where you put the tree, put it in the tree. And then when the child grows past that mark, their asthma will be cured. That's an interesting one. There's all kinds of talking about the uh, sicknesses, but also for toothache remedies. If you've ever had a toothache, man, I have. I've had them before. One time I had one so bad, I would have done anything for anybody told me to do, no matter how crazy it was, if I thought that it would have helped me. Toothaches are miserable. But one is if you have a toothache, drink liquids from a cobalt blue jar or glass to cure it. I didn't know that or I would have tried it. This one's funny. Hold liquor in the mouth for several minutes and then swallow it. So I guess after you do that a few times, you wouldn't worry about your toothache anymore. Uh, chew ragweed leaves. See, I don't even know. They may be poison. I have no clue. Put cinnamon oil on the tooth and put clove oil on the tooth. I have used clove oil and it does help. It helps. It doesn't make it completely go away, but it eases the pain. Put persimmon juice on the tooth. Never tried that one. Uh, place a piece of cloth soaked in kerosene on the tooth. And if you did that, I think you might have more problems than just a toothache. That sounds too scary. Hold a warm bag of ashes, salt, or water on the cheek. I've done that, like with a heating pad or a hot water bottle. Remember those old hot water bottles that had like the screw in? They were rubber and had the little screw in top. Granny had a red one. And I remember me and Paul and Steve, we loved that thing. Or maybe it was just me and Paul. I don't know for sure about Steve. But we'd heat that thing up. And we'd wrap it in a blanket and pretend like it was a baby. Or we'd want to sleep with it. Those old... Um, 
water bottles like that. I've heard people putting in, in the winter months when it was really cold in a cold house, of course you heat rocks in a fireplace and put them in your bed, like at the bottom of your bed, wrap them in towels or something. But I've also heard of people putting hot water in a milk jug. I guess that's similar to the hot water bottle that I was talking about. Um, you can make a hole in it, another hole in the tree trunk a little higher than the toothache sufferer's head, cut a piece of their hair, place it in there and plug up the hole. That's supposed to cure the, the toothache. Get up before sunrise each morning and say a Bible verse for three days. <laughs> this one's funny. Take a splinter or piece of a tree that has been struck by lightning and pick at your cavity. That's supposed to cure it. And then you can stuff your cavity, if it's like a cavity, I guess, where your tooth's almost gone, with soda, sodi, old people call it, older people, Granny and Pat both called it sodi, that's bacon soda, spider webs, aspirin, or, or aspirin, maybe the aspirin would help, I don't know, or salt, I don't know, that one might, might, might cause other issues, but then you can prevent a toothache by carrying a hog's head bone in your pocket. I always put your left shoe on first. I have no clue which shoe I put on first. I'll have to really pay attention next time. Wear nutmeg around your neck. I would think nutmeg would have been hard to, to come by, but maybe not. Always cut, this, these are funny. Always cut your nail, fingernails on Friday to keep you know, the headache or the toothache away. But then the other one, another piece I found somewhere else said, never cut your fingernails on Friday to keep the toothache away. So it's funny. Uh, other folklore about teeth is if you dream of losing a tooth, it's a sign of death. See, I told you death is everywhere. I always like these, uh, if you get too close to a spider and it counts your, your teeth, you'll die. I don't like the dying part, but teeth, or spider like the rotten spider, if you've ever seen them, and I know I don't know the scientific name for it, but you know it, its web looks like it's trying to write out someone's name or something. That's the one that's supposed to be able to to count your teeth, so you're supposed to keep your mouth closed if you go around it so it can't count your teeth. Another one about that is, reminds me, an inchworm, if you catch an inchworm on you, it means that little inchworm is measuring your body for your, for your coffin, so that's a sign of death. That's funny. So some of the ones that I actually grew up with, these are all just funny to think about, but most of those I didn't grow up with anybody saying them. But one that Granny lived by and still lives by today, although she don't get to get out and go places much anymore, but is if you, you have to leave by the same door you entered. So if she come to see me and she come in the back door, when she left, she made sure she left by the uh, back door. She didn't go out of the front door. She'd say, no, I got to go out the same door I, let, I come in. And you think, well, that's so silly. But, you know, you think, well, it's Granny, and she was born in 1940, and she holds on to the old ways. But the interesting one about that one is that uh, one time I, I used to work at a college, and I was in a college boardroom with a board meeting going on, and I heard someone in there say that. So see, those things kind of hang on. Maybe that person didn't believe it, or maybe it was something they they just always observed because their mother or father or grandparent, whoever, had said it. But so there, that one was still hanging on. And not to say that a college campus is uh, this great fancy place but it, you know it is odd that you'd hear a piece of folklore like that in the boardroom of a college campus I guess is what I'm trying to say I, I would hear this one often when I was young sweep if you sweep under somebody's feet they'll never marry so if somebody was sweeping around and I wasn't getting out of the way they'd say tipper you better move if I sweep under your feet you'll never get married um, and another one that Granny always told us is never tell your dreams before breakfast or they'll come true. Well, I used to think, well, I, what if I want them to come true, you know? Maybe, I, maybe it's a really good dream and I want it to come true. So that's an interesting one. Some of the ones, um, even when I was small at elementary school, that kids went around saying, especially girls, girls was more, of course, into it about, uh, into folklore and superstition than boys, and mostly it was because it all, they all, all those kind of things uh, meant who liked you, who was gonna, who was gonna be your boyfriend, you know. But uh, one was necklaces, so I have one of Katie's beautiful necklaces uh, on today that she made me, but the clasp. So if the clasp got all the way down, you know, sometimes the clasp of your necklace will ride down to the front, it meant somebody was thinking about you, you know, your, the boy you liked was thinking about you. It, um, and then you were supposed to, if it fell to the front, you're supposed to kiss it, make a wish, and then put it back around the, your neck where it belonged at the back of your neck, and then your wish would come true. And then, um, we, that's all the ones that we observed. That's the ones that we thought about. But then after that, I found out, no, if it moves to the left in front of your neck, it means someone's thinking about you. If it means to the right, it means somebody's talking about you. So those are funny ones. Um, 
And then if a necklace breaks, you'll have bad luck. I think that would be bad luck if one of your favorite necklaces broke, so. But, and we also, back then, like most young girls, uh, we liked to, the ones that not just would foretell who we might marry, but also how many kids we might have. So of course there's the one, um, like a daisy, which everybody's familiar with that, that you pull out the petals, he loves me, loves me not, he loves me, loves me not, and how it ends. But then that little center of the daisy, we would tear it out into little pieces and put it in our hand, and then we would throw our hand up, and then every how many pieces of the uh, bloom were left in our hand meant how many kids we were gonna have. Well, of course, sometimes it might be one or two, but sometimes it might be 15, you know, which would just make us uh, roll around and laugh about that one. But um, every time we ate an apple, you turn the stem, and as you're turning it, you're like A, B, C, D, and whichever letter it comes off on, that's the initial of the person that you're gonna marry. Another one about how many kids you're gonna have, so we would do, um, ever how many times you could reach around your wrist as you go down your arm. And, and you know, I can just, well, I can go, I guess I can go more than that. I can go more than I actually have. I only have two children. Anyway, that was another one that we did. It's all silly, I know, but there's part of me that thinks, I just hope there's some little kid, some little girl at Martins Creek or whatever elementary school around me, I went to Martins Creek, that's still doing that today, you know? It's just... I don't know, it's just a, a neat thing when you're hopeful as a child and you think you can, your heart's just full of uh, belief that anything can happen. So, um, more about the bad luck ones, kind of bad luck ones. There's a whole series of those about having bad luck. One of them uh, is if you see a, and this may be common in other areas too, but if you see a black cat at night cross your road, of course that's bad luck. I used to run around with a girl that every time that happened, she would lick her finger and make an X on the windshield of the car we were in. So that was supposed to cancel it out, you know. Um, then there's some that are spring folklore. I like these because we're getting, this time of the year we start looking towards the end of uh, winter and hoping for spring. So if you wash your hair in March rain, you'll have pretty locks. Your hair will be pretty. And this would be for someone who has cows and has milk. Of course, we don't have cows, but never mix April 30th milk with May 1st milk or butter will be slow in coming. If you get your head wet in the first rain of May, you will not have a headache all year long. I need to do that one. I need to make sure that I do that one. If you wash your face in dew on May 1st, you'll be pretty. March snow is good for sore eyes. Snow in April is manure. So snow has, um, I think, nitrogen. You tell me if I'm wrong. I probably am. But anyway, there's something in snow that's good for the soil. So that's what, where that one comes from. Uh, spring peas placed in a child's shoe will stop their growth. Papa Tony used to tell Corey and Katie, because he, he didn't get to see them often, and when he would, he'd be like, I can't believe how you growed. I'm going to have to put a board and a rock on top of your head to keep you from growing anymore. Um, and then there's some sayings that made me think of those, poorer than a crow in spring or a thin as a whippoorwill in spring. I've heard those. So this time of the year before spring, during this winter months, there's nothing better than just sitting by, uh, if you have a wood stove or maybe you have a fireplace or something and listening to the, or if you do it outside, a bonfire or something, but listening to the hiss and pop and crack of the, of the logs as they burn. So there's lots of folklore about that. So one of them is when the log tramps along like someone's walking, they're, they're telling you company's coming, company will be here. Another one about company is like if your nose itches or the variations of that, if you drop the dish towel, it means company's coming. There's a bunch of those like that. When the logs make a sort of sobbing sound, rain is sure to follow. When the logs putter and make a sound like a person walking through snow, you know it will soon snow. And Lonnie Dockery, he was a dear friend and a blind pig reader. He told me he always heard that the fire was tramping snow when it made that noise, uh, when it sounded like someone was walking on the snow, or walking, yeah, walking on snow. When the fire roars up the chimney like it wants out, there's sure to be a fuss in the family. One time when the deer hunter and I, or Matt and I were dating, we were at Papa Tony's and he had a, um, uh, a basement that had a wood stove in it, kind of like ours, except his might have been a little nicer than ours. But anyway, that's where me and Matt would hang out. There was a TV and a couch and stuff, you know. And we were sitting down there one day watching a movie or watching something, I don't know what we were doing. And just immediately you could tell that it was a chimney fire, but we just happened to be sitting right there when it first started. Well, Papa was upstairs and he heard it too. We took off running and he took off running towards us and we kind of met in the middle. But um, he put the deer hunter, shoved him up on the 
roof with a water hose and they got it put out thankfully but i'm thankful we were just sitting right there by it right when it happened so i i know what it sounds like for the fire to roar up a chimney i don't want to hear that again um these are just some random ones you're not it's never supposed to change your calendar until the next month or that's bad luck and poor granny she's got to where she can't really reach up now so i one day i was i try i'll forget but I, it's right when you go in her door is where she has her calendar and i try to make myself look at it and see if it needs to be changed but of course i don't always sometimes i'll look at it and it'll be half the month will be gone and i'll be like granny i need to change your calendar i'm sorry i forgot but that so that's one granny would never have to worry about bad luck for not for changing her calendar too early um this is just a silly one i'll end on but if your child is having trouble in school with a subject you know maybe they're having trouble for me it would have been with geometry or algebra you're supposed to sleep on the book put it under your pillow and then while you're sleeping all that stuff will you know go into your brain and then you'll do better about it anyway that that's a funny one to uh to stop on but i hope you'll leave a comment and share any pieces of folklore maybe that you really did observe or you do now you know uh, or that you just heard growing up or if you're in appalachia if you've heard any of these that i've mentioned and like i said i by no means covered them all so please leave any that you think of that was common in your family um, another one i thought of about the the dish rag made me think of or dish towel was feet if your foot itches it's supposed to mean that you're going to walk on strange ground so that's a neat one too. I like that. Yeah, I could, it's just fascinating for me to think about them and, and dwell on them. And even though I don't necessarily believe them all or anything like that, I just really find them interesting. And I hope you do too. I hope you enjoyed this video. Mostly, I just hope you'll drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia.